you felt like, okay, I can do this for two months. After two months, it was crazy. <laughs> My mom had some issues at the time, and I, I wasn't able to go back to be there for her. It was playing on me. In rare cases, jurors were allowed to attend family events, but only under the strict supervision of the deputies. The court feared they'd discuss the trial, watch TV, or even be physically attacked. My son had a birthday, so they worked it out. I had two deputies go with me. My nephew passed. I wasn't around anybody else that loved him. When I did see my family, it was such a relief, and I had no idea that that isolation would make me feel the way I did. So it's, it's hard, it was hard. But the jurors had to put the mounting stress of sequestration aside and focus on the complicated evidence being presented by the prosecution. Ron and Nicole are dead, and there's no other eyewitness at the scene. So, of course, forensics become critical. And in this case, uh, the forensics are DNA. Right. The problem with forensic DNA in 1995 is that it's new. I'd read about it, but I'd never handled a DNA case. And, you know, not to say the jurors aren't intelligent, but it is complicated. There are four bases that make up all the DNA, and they have the names adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. That went on for 30 days of mind-numbing scientific evidence that no one really understood. I think that the science became so complicated that it made it easy for the jurors to ignore it. As the prosecution's forensic testimony slogged along, sequestration began to create a larger strain on the jurors. Being sequestered brought out the bad in some of these jurors. You will have a group of the youngest jurors together, or there may be a table where they're all black jurors, and then there's a table where they're all white jurors. Some of the jurors resented me for sitting with my group, which were people closer to my age. There would be snide remarks loud enough for me to hear them. A lot of the BS was over movies. we take a vote. You'd say, OK, the majority rules, but it didn't work out like that. It was always a ruckus. One juror was walking, and she slapped another juror upside the head. It became combative, where we had to have two movie rooms instead of one. Under ordinary circumstances, those people would not have been that way. It was a result of being confined. But with no end in sight, the court made attempts to placate the jury, often with unintended consequences. You did have a conjugal visit. I don't believe there was any pillow talk because you had the, the light on the smoke alarm. And of course, everybody thought there was a camera in there. You just were paranoid about everything. I was totally unhappy and I started becoming uh, very introverted. I stayed to myself. I, I was just that stressed out about it. One night, I couldn't breathe. So I fell out of my room and I just fell on the floor because in the hallway, they had cameras. And so the deputies came. They called the ambulance. Lon had suffered a heart attack. After one night in the hospital, he was released and sent immediately to Judge Ito's chambers. I started letting Judge Ito know, look, man, I'm, I'm sick. I can't take this anymore. Johnny Cochran jumped up immediately. Oh, doesn't he like football? And they were going to take us and let us go to football games as a means to try to appease me. With only two alternates left, losing any more jurors presented the risk of a mistrial. We, as a defense team, went through great pains to reduce the presentation of our evidence out of fear that we might not have 12 jurors remaining. I'm the reason why the trial ended when it did, because they were starting to be concerned about whether or not I could make it to the end of the trial. 